Uh, my name is Hugh Owen. I'm the convert son of Sir David Owen, who was the first Secretary General of International Plant Parenthood Federation. Um, my wonderful wife has given us nine beautiful children, one of whom is a uh, novice with the Benedictines of Mary, who are dedicated especially to praying for priests. And um, we have 20 grandchildren so far. And I'm the founder and director of the Kolbe Center for the Study of Creation, which provides a forum for Catholic theologians, philosophers, and natural scientists who defend the traditional teaching of the church on creation um, and show the fatal flaws in the alternative accounts of the origins of man in the universe. Forgive me if I speak quickly because I'm trying to respect the time limits that I was given. Here in Rome, more than 100 years ago, St. Pius X announced the worst heresy in the history of the church, modernism, whose principal doctrine, he said, was evolution. St. Pius X saw that if the modernists took control, they would destroy everything because they would say that the liturgy, the marriage laws, the moral doctrines of the past must be changed since we've evolved into a new situation. This madness has spread everywhere because it has claimed a scientific foundation. Brilliant intellectuals like Father Zahm at Notre Dame University at the beginning of the 20th century defied the congregation of the index, which had forbidden theologians from attempting to reconcile evolution with the Catholic faith by pointing to the alleged fact exemplified in the drawings of the German anatomist Ernst Haeckel that the human embryo recapitulates all the stages of evolution in his mother's womb. In 1950, Pope Pius XII published Humani Generis and reminded the bishops of their duty to teach that all of Genesis is true history and that every word in the Bible is true, not only when it speaks of faith or morals, but when it speaks of history, natural science, or anything else. The only permission he gave was for scholars to examine the evidence for and against the evolutionary hypothesis. Nine years later, on the 100th anniversary of the publication of Origin of Species, the leading evolutionist scientist in the world, Sir Julian Huxley, announced that embryology, as exemplified in Haeckel's drawings, gave the best proof that a one-celled organism had turned into a human being through a material process of evolution and the great majority of Catholic intellectuals meekly assented to this claim. In 1970, Father Karl Rahner went into print asserting that the human embryo goes through all the stages of evolution, a fish stage when we have gills, an amphibian stage, a reptilian stage when we have a vestigial tail before finally reaching the human stage. This was the moment when my father, Sir David Owen, retired from the UN to become the first Secretary General of IPPF, as IPPF changed its public position on abortion and began its campaign for abortion on demand. Catholic intellectuals like Father Honor made IPPF's job easy, as the abortion lobbyists could now say, your finest theologians reconcile, recognize that evolution is a fact. How can you be so stupid as to think that something at the fish stage deserves all the rights of a fully developed human being. Of course, when the photographs of the human embryo and the embryos of the other kinds of organisms featured in Haeckel's drawings were published, they proved that the human embryo was quite distinct from all of the other organisms, organisms at the same stage of development, and that all the other kinds of organisms were equally distinct from each other, flatly contradicting all the predictions of the leading evolutionists. Yet every element of the anti-culture of death continues to derive its respectability from the so-called science of evolution. There would be no rational justification for contraception, abortion, transgenderism, or homosexuality if evolution were exposed as the pseudoscience that it is. But to this day, most Catholic intellectuals ignore Pope Pius XII's exhortation to examine its claims. When I was an undergraduate at Princeton University, the consensus view in biology held that 98% of human DNA was junk, 
left over from the millions of years of human evolution. Richard Dawkins went all over the world winning converts to atheism with this bogus claim, while most Catholic intellectuals remained silent or concurred. Yet when Project ENCODE studied the so-called non-coding DNA, scientists discovered that it's not junk. It operates at a higher level of functioning than the DNA that codes for protein, often switching on and off genetic programs that enable plants and animals to adapt rapidly to changing environments. We now know that the DNA sequences in the cells of all living things can be read in one direction to give a meaning, meaningful set of instructions, read in the opposite direction to give a different meaningful set of instructions, that there is a pattern whereby, for example, every so many letters can be read to give a third set of meaningful instructions, and the sequence can be translated into another language to give a fourth set of meaningful instructions. No human being can create information at this level of density and complexity. And as famous plant geneticist Dr. Sanford has demonstrated, information this dense and complex cannot be improved by mutations. It can only degenerate. Thus, we now know for certain that we are not evolving into Superman. We are devolving from an original state of perfection, just as God revealed in the sacred history of Genesis. Indeed, God's revelation tells us that he created everything in the universe for us out of love, and that when we destroyed the harmony of the first created world with our sin, God came down into the misery that we made, took it all upon himself, suffered and died for us, rose again, and founded the Catholic Church so that we could become new creations in him and cooperate with him in restoring everything back to the beauty that it had in the beginning and to bring it to an even more wonderful perfection at the end of time. Understanding that is what gives meaning to every human life, a meaning that the evolutionary account of origins destroys, thus clearing the way for the global anti-culture of death. My brothers and sisters, it is time to proclaim that the emperor of evolution has no clothes and to restore the traditional doctrine of creation as the foundation of our faith and the only firm foundation for a culture of life. Our Lady of Fatima, pray for us. I'd just like to um, mention a couple of things. One, uh, for anybody who would like to learn how to defend the traditional Catholic doctrine of creation, which is the foundation of our faith and the only firm foundation for a culture of life. Um, there are two main websites that I would recommend. One is uh, www.foundationsrestored.com. And this is where we have the first two episodes of our DVD series, Foundations Restored, um, available for free, and then you can order the streaming version of the DVD series and uh, the physical DVDs. But everything is on a suggested donation basis. So if, it's, uh, if somebody doesn't have the money, they can give what they can afford. If they can't afford anything at all, we'll give them free access to it. This DVD series is the most comprehensive defense of the traditional teaching of the church on creation from the perspective of theology, philosophy, and natural science that has ever been produced in the video medium. And we have great teachers like Father Ripperger and Dr. Wolfgang Smith and uh, Dr. John Sanford. Um, and our experience has been all over the world that young people who receive this knowledge in their formative years, they do not join the mass exodus of young Catholics out of the Catholic Church. Their foundation is shored up and they become very good Catholics, whether as priests, religious, mothers, fathers, whatever God calls them to do. The other website is our main website, which is www.colbaycenter.org. That's the one that's on the back of the pamphlet that's available at the registration desk, Evolution and the Culture of Death. And we have so many materials there for free that cover all the main points. And on the home page, if you go down towards the bottom, 
There are uh, short videos there which really hit the main points, and those are very, very good, especially for using with young people or people who don't want to spend more than a few minutes. It's enough to hopefully get them to at least to begin thinking about these issues. Um, the other thing that um, I would like, there are two other things I'd like to mention very briefly. Uh, one is that on the registration table, we have a pamphlet about something called the Christ the King Service Network. And this is an initiative of many different uh, apostolates that have joined together to work for um, greater unity and building up the kingdom of God. The idea is to build up a database of goods and services that faithful Catholics provide all over the world. And then people who want to uh, obtain that good or service can go to this database and get it from faithful Catholics because this is what Muslims do when they're a minority in, a, in an African country. For example, um, my friend Dr. Ngari was telling me how in Kenya they work together in a very unified way and in every transaction they'll try to build up the influence of Islam. We don't think that way. But we need to because living our consecration to Jesus through Mary means every transaction is an opportunity to build up the kingdom of God. Every thought, every word, every action. So if you're interested, please take one of those pamphlets. And if you know anybody that has any kind of service or goods that they would make available, um, that they would like to be part of this, please have them go to the website because if we work together, we could build this up <laughs> and we could change our way of thinking. So if we want to order a book, we won't just go to Amazon because it's convenient and then we're literally supporting one of the worst enemies of the kingdom of God every time we give them our business. The last thing I'd like to mention is, you know, people um, are understandably concerned that Pope Francis has now appointed so many cardinals who are modernists, how would we ever be able to get out of this mess? And I want to share something with you. I know many of you probably already know this, but God says in his word, Prophet Amos, God does nothing without telling his servants the prophets. And if you look at the, the prophets, the saints whose writings were approved by the church over the last several hundred years, they prophesied everything that is happening right now. But what's better is they saw the other side of it. Here in this city, 200 years ago, there were two of the greatest um, prophetic voices in the modern history of the church. Blessed Anna Maria Taigi, wife, mother, and mystic here in Rome, and blessed Elizabeth Canori Mora, also wife, mother, and mystic who died here, and now you can't get into the church where, where her, her remains are. <laughs> um, but listen to this. Both of these women, they were shown that after this terrible crisis in the church and all hell breaks loose and God uh, preserves those who have kept the faith, who have held on to the deposit of faith, He's, they, they both were shown that St. Peter himself would come down to earth and would choose the Pope who will lead the restoration and also appoint the holy monarch when the Catholic monarchy is restored in France. And this is what the biographer of Blessed Elizabeth Canori Mora wrote, this, writing down what God showed to Blessed Elizabeth. The heavens opened and St. Peter descended, surrounded by a host of angels. With his staff, he traced a large cross upon the ground and four mysterious trees arose to serve as a place of refuge for all the faithful who had the happiness to preserve the sacred deposit of the faith during the cruel trial which our Lord was about to send upon his church. And that's what um, God is creating through the family of God is these 
these um, networks, these communities where the faith is preserved. And then she saw in the horrible confusion that followed, men devoured each other. The devils themselves mixed in the carnage to multiply the victims. But they could vent their homicidal rage only on the impious. The good, sheltered under the four mysterious trees, were in safety under the protection of the holy apostles, Saints Peter and Paul. And when the divine justice was appeased, the angels mingled with the faithful who had not failed during the trial and conducted them to the feet of Saint Peter. He himself chose the new pontiff who was destined to reorganize the church. The religious orders were reestablished. The faithful were inflamed with new fervor. The church recovered her primitive beauty and the sovereign pontiff was recognized in every country of the world as the vicar of Jesus Christ. That is the testimony of the true prophets. We have nothing to fear if we remain faithful.